Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. Ah, oh, the tension today is unbearable. We are still in this trench uh, that we came up from, from the deep Sofra River Well. And we have two paths. One of them... Friends, subscribers, forebears... Bear witness! Oh, that didn't quite reach. We're definitely starting this off from max range. It's not like I'm gonna get a lot of these, so... This is why you don't roll backwards. I am committing a mistake. You must... Must not fear bear. When you fear bear, you make biggest mistake, which is to get mauled by bear. Oh, shit. Must not fear bear. Yee. Damn, that's delayed. Okay, we're good. I think we're... <laughs> nah, it's fine. We got this. Silly old bear. I must stop committing the cardinal mistake. <laughs> Okay, the good news about that attack that I keep getting hit by is I'm gonna get plenty of chances to figure that out because it does no damage. Bear is big, bear is scary. Your brain wants you to go the direction opposite of bear, but that is death. <laughs> You're not really getting a good sense of it, but the range of this thing's attacks like that. Like, look, there's no amount of rolling backwards that'll get you enough distance to outrange his football field size attacks. Remember, remember, there, I think I got saved because he stomped the boulder. I didn't actually time that right, I don't think. Um, bear is just big enemy. Big enemy is always weak to being under them. Common wisdom, but it bears repeating. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I thought about just running it, because that, that reward is nothing. That reward is absolutely nothing. Uh, but there's two reasons not to run. If you can avoid it. Um, one of them is because it makes dropping here a little tricky. Because sometimes that, that fall, that looks perfectly safe, even without the soft cotton, will just decide to kill you. Uh, and second, sometimes Bear follows you down here. <laughs> and it's, it's the hardest enemy to outrun on Torrent. Also, it's got a projectile. As for this, why do we find another one of these Graven Schools down here? Can Kaelid not just stop with the horrors? It's around every single corner here. Yeah, I thought about running, but... The other reason is I just didn't want to start today off running away from a big enemy. There's going to be plenty of time for that. 
Because this time we're in Kaelid, but we're here to stay. We're here for the long haul this time. That's something about Elden Ring and its open world that, like, I don't know, I kind of... <laughs> Big Beetle. Big Pal. I kind of find myself riding through a lot of it. And I notice this more on New Game Plus, where it's like, yeah, you're gonna do that. But, I, I don't know, I... I don't know, I have complicated feelings about that. Just like, running from the enemies and looting as I go. I feel like I want to strike more of a balance between, like, just going through the open world and actually engaging with it a little bit more, aside from, like... Ooh, hello! When it funnels you into, like, a linear section, like a, a dun- like a legacy, a dungeon, or a mini dungeon. Good. How many more of you are there? Okay, there's a few. Ooh. Oh! Holy shit! I don't... That's rad! Why are these tree guardians so cool? That little shoulder check they do, that's so cool. Put these dudes in the next King of Fighters DLC pack. Oh no, I know. Microsoft, it's finally time to pull the trigger on a new KI. Do it! Do it! Do it. <laughs> Jonathan, Microsoft, I know you're watching. I'm talking to you. <laughs> these can be the first guest characters. <laughs> Let me just get a little bit further down the hill real quick, and we're going to take our bird out for a test drive on a putrid avatar down here, which is the same as every other Erd Tree avatar we've fought, except this one can do a butt stomp that spreads scarlet rot. And I can do eye lasers at it. So hear me out. Namco owns... Dark Souls and Elden Ring, right? They also own Tekken and Soul Calibur, right? The PvP in these games is real popular, right? So now the, qu <laughs> the question becomes in my mind... Ow, shit. Should this be a more Soul Calibur-esque uh, uh, 3D fighter? Where it's just dudes in armor with cool weapons, or do we go... Or do we get, like, much more fun with this and basically go 3D Darkstalkers and incorporate some of the monsters? <laughs> get further away... Yeah, it's still building up. And it does damage to you while that happens. Or, you know, just a new KI. Just a new KI. We can just do that. Put Blythe in there. Everybody's favorite boy. Just do the thing. I'm wish casting so hard right now, but I just, I really want a new KI. And then put Kiryu and Majima in Tekken. <laughs> put Hisako in Tekken. Ah. <sighs> I've fully lost my mind. Uh, and just across the way, you can see a giant jar guarded by some golem archers. Uh, and that is the other path we could have taken from the Silver River Well. Now around here, there we go. There's doorway and up above. You can see Rosas is up there, so if we had come from that way, he would have been there to guide us towards this catacomb.
And we're coming down here uh, to get something in particular and also to show something pretty cool uh, that I've been wanting to show for a while, but there's just not been a good opportunity to do so yet. Just a funky little item interaction. Hell no, sir. Get that bullshit out of here. Not today. We can, we can play with a couple of new toys while we're down here as well. Huh. The Dragon Claw is an old one that hasn't gotten as much shine as I would like. Uh, and that's all Scarlet Rot. We'll double back to that in a bit. Uh, we can also, I believe, jump down there. Hello. Whoop. Love that offhand rapier. I'm really enjoying the battle mage style. live at the battle mage life. Yeah! That get the one behind me? No, the AoE's not quite big enough. They didn't enter the splash zone. Whoop! I was hoping that would kill. He's living on a magic pixel. There we are. Get on over here. I keep forgetting that this thing is not the same class of weapon as Vike's War Spear. I keep thinking that it's another Great Spear. It's not. <laughs> Which is strange to me. There's actually. delineation now between the spears and great spears on uh, for some reason the inquisitor's grandiol does not count as a great spear even though it's huge it's just a regular spear uh, other things in the great spear category include uh the lance I'm not super familiar with this room. This does feel like somewhere there would be one. All right, so now instead of jumping down there, let's head back to the Scarlet Rot room. And it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. Uh, so we're just going to spring the trap anyway, and just be faster, and maybe pick one or two of them off. Why am I having ha such a hard time locking onto that one? Uh, I'm tempted to just say, screw it. All for a butterfly. The glove ward's worth it, though. Whoops, not what I meant to do. Oh, and we haven't even been afflicted yet. Now we have, but... That's not a long build-up. Plus, we brought Flame Cleanse Me along with us, so... Okay, there's no second pit. <laughs> Had to make sure. Oh yeah, I haven't had that on. Thank you. Okay, let's go play in the slime pit. <laughs> Thank you. 
we just need to navigate the mode of slime, like a like a '90s Nickelodeon game show, and then we're home free to the boss. Oh shit! It's the oldest, most classic trap that they use. Uh, I will survive this. I will survive. I will survive. to do the fucking double dare obstacle course <laughs> to see the boss and to climb the aggro crag and get a piece of that radical rock do 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 you have it he did not they did not most conspicuous here in this catacomb is crab why is crab here what does crab do here they're quite hostile uh, and hungry they're feasting down here And this leads up to uh, the center of that, or I mean the top of that room, the center of which we found the butterfly. And also to one more little treasure. And I'm not super familiar with the room, so I'm gonna take that a little slow. Oh, you. Especially after I already caught, after I already got caught by like the first trap they throw at you in the depths in Dark Souls 1. And like how many times do they use that in Demon Souls? And at other points in Dark Souls? And Dark Souls 2? And 3? <laughs> And Bloodborne? I don't think it happens in Sekiro. I don't remember slime in Sekiro. Or slimes, uh. And again, Sekiro is the one that I've replayed the least. I'm, it's well overdue for a replay. Now, why don't we concentrate on getting out of here without being firebombed by fanged imps? Oh, hello. Cool. And down we go. I think there's another one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can wallow in the pit. Alternatively, he can enjoy his time in the slime pit. His time in the slime zone. We're not going to roll or anything, so the gunk does not get on us. And it won't even build up. We, don't, we won't even have to waste the mana on Flame Cleanse Me. Now we're going to get the crystal darts out because there are two Erdtree Burial Watchdogs in here. And if... You throw enough of these at them, they short circuit and start attacking each other, like shaman bone blades and the, sh the well sharks in Bloodborne. They go completely haywire. Also, we'll get a good look at some of this. It's glintstone sorcery. It uses glintstone sorcery, and that's a glintstone stab. And from everything we did in in uh, Liarnia and Brea Lucaria, even their their heads, their faces, start to take on a different meaning, or at least the it, it, it changes a little bit.
And we get mad pumpkin head ashes from these. I'm not sure what the connection is or why you get those here, but uh, there is also something pretty cool in the description for that. It's mm, an okay look. I like my nice helmet more. Largely an altered head of an impish golem. Oh, they're golems. Resembling wolf. Holds trace amount of lupine endurance. Oh yeah, it gives you two extra endurance. That's not even half bad. Spirit of a mad soldier with a large brawny physique. Though he has stifled his panic within the dark confines of his helmet, he rampages as if driven mad when agitated by bloodshed or the humming of insects. This mad soldier is all that's left of a broken gladiator. That description of the pumpkin heads is a really cool hint. To use um, uh, swarm pots or swarm of flies, a spell, or bleed. Because it drives them berserk. It, uh, I can't make swarm pots yet, though. Uh, and that spell is deeper in the game. I do, however, have access to bleed. And plenty of that. So next time we come across one, we'll have to try that out. And actually, there does happen to be one coming up on our path. Uh, whoops. We're going to be following the Kalid Highway South. It's going to kind of round the Aeonian Swamp, and then we'll make our way further up north and get that map fragment. And that'll actually fill out the the rest of the map for Kalid. But in the meantime, we have so many more horrors ahead. Which is, oh, this is the Rockview balcony, right? So that means we've definitely talked to this ghost, right? It's rotting, everything rotting scarlet, the very earth that Caleb rests upon in Celia Town of Sorcery. The end is nigh for us all! Yeah, we've definitely done that one. The end is nigh! Okay, so... Oh, it's just not the same at night. Kaelid is actually way spookier during the daytime. That brutal red sky is just... It's, it's great. I love it. However... Time for birds! Our bird versus these birds. These are a nightmare. Ooh, look how fast they are. They're one of the other enemies that can keep up with you decently well on Torrent. Monstrous. But manageable. One at a time. It's really backing off. It's gonna go after my bird. You cannot have bird. Jealous. Unfortunately, uh, we will not ever get a Spirit Ash of that, at least unless there's DLC, and even then I doubt it. But I would love this as a Spirit Ash pet. Okay, there's another one. There's three of these total, and two of them are very close to each other. Whoop. That's no good. Come on, come on, break it. Thank you. Ah! Ooh. Okay. And 
this one, I don't even mind taking the coward's way of going purely... Oh, shit. Okay. Well, this is fine. Oh, it's just... It just dropped down from its perch? I thought it aggroed. No, it just wanted a better view of the ass whooping. Come on, get over here. Oh, thank God it stumbled. I may have actually not gotten the second cast off. <laughs> they are quite fast. Oh, I love that dive. He's a little Psycho Crusher. Turn your attention towards me, please. Oh, shit. Overcommitted. But we're fine. Okay. There should only be three of them, I think. <laughs> Please, don't let me be wrong. It would be really funny, but... <laughs> still. Alright, let's use one of our myriad stone sword keys. And get down into this basement. We collected a bunch of St. Trina's lilies. And inside this chest, there is the sword of St. Trina, connecting her with Kaelid in some way. Silver sword carried by clerics of St. Trina inflicts sleep ailment upon foes. St. Trina is an, enig bleh, an enigmatic figure. Some say she's a comely young girl, others are sure he's a boy. The only certainty is that their appearance was as sudden as their disappearance. Okay, and with that, let's get out of here. Piercing at it? Oh, are the birds weak to piercing? Huh. That's a good note. That's a good note. Uh, so we're gonna get back onto the highway. Oh, actually, first I wanna I want my my pretty red sky back. My very pretty, very oppressive red sky. Oh, there it is. There it is. It just doesn't feel like Kaled without it. I make it a point to always turn the sky back to, uh, turn the time back to morning or afternoon whenever I'm here. Okay, so you can hear that beetle chime. And also, we do our best to ransack this carriage without alerting the dogs or the birds. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. I wanted this. We'll take a look at that in a moment, because there is also this chest. I am not fighting that bird. Nope. I think... Thank you for that attack. That was so generous. It was a freebie. I did, however, see something I want to double back for. I'm going to be very greedy here. Uh, wasn't worth it. But, you see, my eyes saw shiny, and I went for it. I'm not going for that beetle. Not at this particular moment. I think there was a red one? I will have to double check later and make sure that wasn't something important, because there may have also been an orange one with... Uh, sometimes they just have smithing stones. I have to double check later. For now, no time to dither about. We want to get away from danger and then again back on the highway. And heading towards the ruins. Because over here there is another site of grace where we can chill for just a moment. Uh, and also compose ourselves, the, ourselves, the Kalem. 
ruins. Get a little bit of grease, and I think around here there are riding some fire chariots. Pretty sure I'm in the right. There we are. Oh, there's a couple. There's one waiting for me to get a little bit closer. Or for me to head into the into the basement. Oh yeah, they're down here. Okay, cool. So, we're gonna take these bad boys out. And we have two of the pumpkin heads to fight. So we're going to put that little piece of advice that we got from the Mad Pumpkin Head Spirit Ashes uh, to the test here. Oh, and this is perfect. Our bird can fight one of them. Keep him distracted. Doesn't work if you bring him over to me. And then I just want to proc the bleed. Also, you can see why I haven't been there. Oh, that was too fast. Well... Okay, I'll have to be slower about this one, but the bird does not help that. There we go. <laughs> I just want to proc bleed without killing him. Is that too much to ask? You can also see why I haven't been uh, using bloody slash too, too much. It's ridiculously strong. Really? Wait. Okay, I guess bleed doesn't work. And he's not really acting any differently. I think it might only be the fly stuff. The the swarm pots and the spell. Whoop. Too early the first time. Just go ahead and finish this guy off. I saw a health bar up above me. What is getting attacked and by what? <laughs> oh, is the dogs fighting the soldiers? The Godric sold or not um the Radon soldiers? Okay, and in here we get the Visage Shield. What an oddity this one is. Trixum bronze shield depicting the face of a fire giant. Several tongues leap from its open mouth. The dreadful visage and burning flames are designed to remind one of the horror of facing a fire giant. In other words, this shield has an instructional function. It's it's a, an anti-fire giant propaganda shield. Like, holy shit. And also, it has a unique weapon art, which I don't have the stats required to properly use the shield, so it won't trigger. Uh, it's a flamethrower shield. It's not just instructional, it's functional. It's also just horrifying. It tells us a lot about how the fire giants were seen. Oh, hello, that's what you were designed to do. You were designed to catch me coming out of the basement. So anywhere we see these flame chariots now, we know that these are part of some kind of regiment that fought some kind of horrendous war some heinous battles against fire giants. Oh, hello. Uh, now there's something else I want to show, but it will take a little setting up. I think this one will work. Oh, hello. Don't do that. I 
love for him to come a little closer, but might just have to deal with it. Nope. Something I kept forgetting to show earlier. This. Their special unique plunging attacks. And now we run. That'll be useful again much later. Not much later, that implies that it'll be like towards the end of the game. I mean later this episode. <laughs> Alright. I hear bird. Oh boy! Oh, good, good, good. The bird might catch me. I might not be able to rest unless it has... What was that sound? I heard a shattering noise. Like the... Oh, did I have a bubble running? The bubble may have popped. Okay, I wanted to double back to this. Now that the bird reset. So we can get... Just another magnificent view. I want to see the swamp from here. Oh, even the music in Caleb rocks. Oh, that's the best view. Yes. Oh, there's the Divine Tower. Okay. Did you get the lay of the land? Let's go. Oh, wait, not too far. <laughs> Forgot about you. You. Please. I cannot. You. Can I not call Torrent right there? Is it because I was on top of the barricade? So, everything about the festival to make the stars turn, that's pretty obvious. We've already encountered all of that, all of those concepts before. We're going to Redmain Castle, ultimately, uh, to fight Radon, and there is a festival going on there. So we're going to arrive to a party. And I'm doing this just to clear the other ones, because I'm tired of looking at the ones that I forgot to ride through to make them dissipate. I'm tired of seeing them on the compass and in the sky. Oh, there's an important one. You poison something? No, your life steal fist. Cool. The, the one that doesn't quite make sense yet is the hardened bud of a flower to be? That will become more apparent, but she's guiding us towards the heart of the swamp. The Battle of Aeonia, Renan and Melania, locked in stalemate. Then the scarlet rot blooms. Ah, oh, welcome, dear customer. 
Yes, right this way. Right this way. Welcome, valued customer. Come, trade in our wandering emporium. Please, buy something. I'm hungry. I've been hungry so long. Oh. Poor guy. Oh, he really has nothing. Absolutely nothing on him, so... We'll buy something. Trying to find anything that could possibly be even slightly useful to me. Spend a few thousand runes. It doesn't do anything. This is just me roleplaying and feeling genuinely bad for him. Um, yeah, in the story trailer, we've actually seen when uh, Millennia fights Radon, that moment that she she nukes him with the Scarlet Rot, it blooms. I think like a, I want to say like a lotus, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Either way, this will take us to the, sw the shore of the swamp. Let me see it, if only one last time. Your splendid blade dancing amongst the Scarlet Rod. And not too much longer, we'll be diving fully in there. We have a few things around the periphery of it to hit up first. First, we'll just come up here, and dodge the pests that are up here. And then to the right of them, around here, there it is. Uh, we're gonna pick up... I think these are them. Yeah, the Starlight Shards. They're just one of them, so... Singular Starlight Shard. These will come in handy later. An ephemeral sliver that gives off a pale blue glow, what remains of a passing flash of starlight, used to gradually recover FP, a prized item that was once used in the Eternal City as an ingredient in intoxicating droughts. Then we'll just loop back over. Is this another one? Some of these are spaced really close together. This is a useful one to have, though. Because it's right next to... Uh, a certain cathedral. Down there on the low ground is a dragon named Decaying Exeeks. Or Exeeks. Uh, he's way, way too strong for us right now. Uh, he's also Scarlet Rot Dragon. And since we don't have to actually take the straight road into the church, uh, we can get into the Cathedral of Dragon Communion this way. But beware of the Manish Knight immediately trying to rock you. Okay. That's all you're doing. Do your thing. That would have worked in Stormvale Castle when I was getting hit by that non-stop. Oh, nice. And we got the altered version, too. Oh, right. The robe. Uh, the robe and there's something else. Um, there should also be this, Crystal Staff. Staff fashion from pure crystal, a deed impossible for a human. Enhances Crystallian sorceries. The Crystallian's faint cogitation is known as Wisdom of Stone. So I got this and the robes off screen when I, re when I went to revisit and clear out the crystal caves for uh, smithing stones. Also the Greatsword. I almost forgot about this. It's described as a coarse iron lump, possessing incredible weight. Uh, it requires the wielder to have surpassed the realm of the merely human. 
Uh, let's also see the other two things that I was that I had an eye on, uh, which are the robes and the banished knight armor. Uh, and then I'll, I I want to talk a little bit more about the great sword. Uh, scholars of sorcery, those who dedicate themselves to the study of glintstone formed from starry amber, receive this uh, modest yet elegant deep navy garb after making their vows of virtue and austerity. But with extended life. One is apt to forget vows. Thick, full set of armor, cover an entire body, armor worn by knights who, whether by misfortune or misdeed, were forced to abandon their homes. On uh, because of their accomplishments, they retained their titles of knights in spite of their territorial losses. How does this look? A little bit bulky for what I'm wearing now, but I'll keep that around. Ah, uh, right. So, many of you might already know the manga artist Kentaro Miura, creator of Berserk, passed away in 2021. I believe this is the first thing that they that FromSoft has, has made since that happened. Uh, and it can't be said enough that he was an enormous influence on both Hidetaka Miyazaki, the director of the game, um, and presumably many other talented developers at from soft, especially in their art department, it shows. Uh, and here we actually get access to... Oh, we don't have any hearts left over. Some new spells, including the spells for the named uh, dragons, like Smarag. What the hell? Was that my bubble again? Do I keep getting jump scared by my bubble popping <laughs> after three minutes? Uh, and blah, I got sidetracked bad. Um, yeah, these don't really have anything. The dead gazed at the skies over the Lake of Limgrave, praying that the dragon would burn them alive. Oh, communion's dragon hearted. Okay. Um, ba ba ba. There are there are berserk references everywhere in these games. Like you probably heard this before, or if you are familiar with berserk, it's glaringly obvious. Um, some of them are more subtle than others, but it, there's just a large volume of them. Elden Ring is just especially littered with them. Um, Blythe being one of the most obvious, the great sword. Um, even the, the beaks on the, the birds here in Kaelid kind of remind me in the snout on Guts's Beast of Darkness. What is that over the... Oh, that's facing Fort Height. So there's this lone banished knight who's just chilling out here on the cliff, staring out over the sea towards Fort Height. I never noticed that. I wonder if he was, if he was like banished by Kenneth. Oh, that's really interesting. Cool, 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 cool. We just want to give Exeeks, uh, there he is, a little wide of a berth. He's not quite aggroed, but he's awake. to do a U-turn and just, again, stay nice and wide away from him. He's a little feisty. This is fine. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, wait. There's a nice... Is that the one? Is that the one I wanted? I don't think... No, this is not the Knight's Cavalry I want. That's... Mm, later. Oh, well, we're here now. And I do have a little fun fact about these. Except, shit, I need to stop spacing these recordings out because... Why is he not... There we go. That was strange. It's like, is this just a regular enemy version of the Knight's Cavalry that I don't remember? Because I don't remember what this one gives. There's another one later in Caitlyn that gives something incredibly strong in Ash Vor. But I know this is not that one. 
Uh, yeah, I keep forgetting whether or not I've mentioned some random tidbit because of the, the length there are uh, there is between recordings sometimes. Uh, Knight's cavalries are kind of incomplete, much like the Pursuer was. The vision for both of them was for them to patrol a wider area and to really wander around. I don't think it was ever intended to be, like, uh, Nemesis or Mr. X, but I always imagine that, like, what if the Pursuer was more like that? This more persistent, constant threat. That's one of the things I loved about the uh, Scholar of the First Sin version was they improved on that a little by giving him a few more spawn points, which makes him feel like that much more uh, omnipresent. You could always just show up whenever. That one in the things betwixt is so good. That's that's a good one. Also, the New Game Plus one uh, in the throne room. I can't remember if that's from Scholars or not. Man, Dark Souls 2 had some really good ideas. Especially for its New Game Plus. I loved all the remixing they did. Like, the new enemies, the new Dark Spirits. There we are. It kept the second playthrough really tense. Like, you still had... Is that the flames are gonna kill yet? Like you still have to keep your wits about you and be very cautious. Like you couldn't do that thing I was talking about where it's on new, where new game plus. You know everything by now. You're just kind of blowing through everything. You still had to treat it like it was your first playthrough almost. Also, bonfire aesthetics. Bring those back. Those were a great idea. The bosses are one of the highlights of these games. They're great. They rule. Let me refight them. <laughs> that would be the perfect thing for the crafting system. Craft some bonfire aesthetics. Uh, this particular area is a really good place to farm. Uh, in the early-ish game, if, again, you don't have access to that really nice spot uh, in the Mogwin Palace from Vare's Quest. Uh, if you come out here and you just aggro everything, the Radon soldiers will get caught up fighting all the giant horrible dogs. And they'll eventually will each other down, and you'll get a nice couple thousand runes out of it without actually having to do anything. And they happen to be right outside of the impassable Great Bridge to Redmain Castle. This way gate will take us right inside of the festival. But then again... How much fun would that be if we skipped everything else? Either way, that's going to be for the end of Kaelid. Uh, we're not quite there yet. We still have quite a lot of Kaelid to see. But just a preview of the dungeon to come. Should we... No, we can actually just ride back from here. I think that might be... A little bit more simple. Plus, we can kind of gaze out over this vast dune. Uh, that's that's curiously located right behind Redmain Castle. And it's a big open blank spot on the map. Not blank, but seemingly nothing in it. Boy, that sure is a big landmass. Ah. <sighs> If you don't know, by the way, the boss of this uh, particular level, General Radon, Scourge of the Stars, is a real tree! <laughs> Holy shit, I cannot wait! Oh my god, it's so hype. Oh no, no, no! 
We don't. Oh! That went from bad to worse. Okay. We ride away. Totally fine. Yeah, they're more occupied with each other than they are on trying to kill me, so. We can simply move on. And I think. Ah. Uh, well, we want to dodge the crows, but their attention isn't on me. Now we're heading back towards the swamp. Ah, uh, because I think it's finally time. To oh, Jesus! Jesus Christ. We're gonna see what I mean about them keeping up with Torrent. On uneven terrain, they will catch you. <laughs> but just a flat straightaway like this, you can just you can barely outrun them. Uh, before we hit the swamp, I forgot, we actually have to head through Celia Gateway. Stop by the shack. Oh, and this message left by the NPC in the hood is pointing towards the shack and a dog who's sitting obediently in front of it. That's his pet. Oh, a pleasure to see you. A pleasure indeed. I am Gari, a great sage. In my day, anyway. I'd hoped to ask a favor when one of your ilk came along. A strapping young tarnished, able to cross the Scarlet Swamp of Aeonia. Don't fret. I'll provide fine recompense. Should you accept... I will teach you the secret of Celia, the town you see there. Ah, then you are willing to lend a hand, are you? I need your help to heal a certain young girl. Her name is Millicent. You will find her beyond Celia, resting at the church atop the cliff, stricken by the rotting sickness. The rotting sickness that afflicts Millicent has no cure. When the Erd Tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. But Millicent's suffering can be ameliorated. For this, you are to find a certain needle. Seek the deep, scarlet swamp of Aeonia outside Celia's bounds. The needle, made from unalloyed gold, is lost somewhere there. First, you must find the unalloyed gold needle. It's hidden somewhere in the deep scarlet swamp of Aeonia. Then I will tell you, as promised, the secret of the town of Celia. First, you must... It's hidden, then I will tell the secret. Okay, so he'll tell us the secret of Celia, Town of Sorcery, if we recover this unalloyed gold needle. A needle of pure 24 karat gold. So that Gowrie can help ease the suffering of someone named Millicent, who's afflicted with scarlet rot. Alright, now I'm ready to get back on track. We're heading into the heart of Aeonia. And this very handy Sight of Grace that we picked up prior uh, brings us right to the current holder of that needle. It goes by the name Commander O'Neill. Oh, hello. Who are you? Oh, that's Pollyanna, adopted daughter. So Commander O'Neill gets friends. So we get a friend too. He summons his own spirit ashes uh, of, whoop, hello, of arbalists. He has uh, some scarlet raw AoE, and the rest is just like melee combos that are slow as hell. 
Still gotta take him a little bit seriously, because if they do land, uh, he will hurt me. Also, there is a phase two, and he's gonna summon more dudes who are much harder than this. So I don't think I'm quite making pace here. At least not with the daggers. As much as I... I... Oh, hello. They're chain-kicking me. I expected more out of Pollyanna. I should have just summoned my bird. Bird would make a much better distraction. Oop. Like I said, he will hurt. If he hits. But he is quite slow. How many is it going to take to proc bleed on him? And that's going to be the real... Uh, the real indicator of whether or not I stick with daggers on him. That's alright, but also that's many hits. That should have hit. That literally clipped into his chest. But it was just after the uh, the active frames ended. Oh, we want to back up a bit. This is a very big AoE. The rot he inflicts is not that bad. Uh, it's just getting hit by the AoE itself is huge damage and it's continuous. Deceptively slow, so deceptively slow sometimes. It's the greatest strength of a big hulking hoss of a boss like this. He couldn't possibly wait until the New Year's to hit me to finish swinging that big uh, the battle standard, right? Oh, he can, and he will. He'll wait until two birthdays from now to complete an attack. Yep. Oh, that's no good. Oh, he is kind of running me dry. Yeah, a true dagger build, this is not. Sad to say, so... Oh yeah, this is what I get for for bringing a friend into a fight. Yeah, this is going to be a fight of attrition, huh? My damage on him is in particular is lacking. Ooh. There's me booble. Me booble popped. That fell too late, that second one. I'll take it. Now yeah, it turns out it's just right. Lord Almighty. That second one scared the shit out of me. I almost didn't realize it was coming. Ooh, I knew it. Ah. Oh well.
Oh, and it was going so well. Ah, uh, that should be the start of... No? Is this phase two transition further along than I thought? Maybe it's 25. Are you a 25er? Yeah, you look like a 25er. You fight like a 25er. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Come on. Are you phase transitioning in 25? Or are you going to keep me waiting? There you are. <laughs> Taking your sweet time. Yeah, these ones have big battle axes. Woo! No, no! Not like that. No, thank you. Oh, shit. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. That's enough being reckless with them. Actually, that's enough of them, period. They're all dead. Good. We're back to a fair and honorable duel. Now, I called it a phase transition, but it's not really, because aside from summoning a new wave of slightly different ads... Yeah, I feel like I've earned some fireballs. Given how huge his weapon is and how big his AoEs are, uh, I get the, the impression that he's not used to being outranged. He doesn't handle it well. Alright, so that's O'Neill. We get the Commander Standard. And the Unalloyed Gold Needle. Let's check both of those out. Oh, it's another Halberd, huh? A beaten red battle standard is furled around this time-worn halberd. Even after his lord had, uh, was fled, Commander O'Neill continued to brandish this flag in the devastation of the raw eaten field of battle. The sole veteran who remembers this battle with pride. So he was a commander of General Radon, who was at the heart of the Battle of Aeonia. And survived all this time out here. An intricately crafted needle of unalloyed gold snapped in half. A ritual implement crafted to ward away the meddling of outer gods. It is thought capable of forestalling the incurable rotting sickness. Sage Gowry has designs for this needle. He has designs for this needle. It's an... It's a suspicious sentence, right? If you describe somebody as having designs for something, it sounds inherently conniving. Uh, do we not... I thought there was a Sight of Grace much closer to him. Do we have to go from here and ride through the gates again? We can also take, uh, the back stair, I guess. I think this is just faster, though. Alright, let's try not to... Good. The dog, I think, has a lower aggro radius than most of them. You found the unalloyed gold needle. As promised, I've detailed the secret of Celia right here. Go on. It's yours. Now let me have a look at the needle. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, this is a marvel indeed. The work of a true artisan. A meticulous, bold craftsman who grasps the essence of life. Can you give me some time with this? As well made as it is, it won't be much use snapped in half, will it? So let's see what that note had to say about Celia, the town of sorcery, uh, right on the outskirts of the swamp. If I can, it's not there, is it? It's over here. 
A note given by Sage Gowry detailing the secret he promised. The town of Celia... Uh, the town of Celia hides the source, like three flames atop the candle towers to break the seal. Can you give me some time? As well made, is it? Then we exit the other gateway, and that puts us into the town of Celia. Uh, and the note he gave us saves us like a couple of minutes of looking around for the solution to this puzzle. Because you'll see all the door not all of them, but several of the doors are uh, locked behind magical gates. Another big boy. Maybe mutated by the rot. Uh, we're just gonna head back this way really quick to the, the site of race that's kind of adjacent to the, the swamp. Oh, and this one actually is a little bit quicker. Good. Quicker way back to Gowry. Uh, cause he did tell us to come back later. So we just reload the area and it's later. Oh, wait. Shit. Okay, the aggro radius is small, but it's not that small. I'm gonna try to avoid killing his pet. Oh! We're also gonna try to avoid having his pet kill us. Oh no, it's destroying his house! No! Leave me alone, I just wanna talk to Gowry. This sucks. I don't think we've had to fight one of these one on one before either. Oh, it's terrible T Rex arms. Oh? Okay. Uh, thankfully, it will respawn. It's not a unique enemy in that way. I have awaited your return. The needle is repaired. Now it will forestall the rotting sickness, I'm sure. Will you give it to the girl, Millicent? I will reward you in kind. <laughs> Millicent rests at the church atop the cliff beyond Celia, the town yonder. Tended to by the witless pests who worship her, or rather her rotting sickness, as a god. A wretched fate, indeed. The poor girl, she never wished for any of this. Do you find it peculiar that I would show such concern for the girl? Well, I'm the one that found her. A mere babe in the swamp of Aeonia. She is one of my dear daughters. But the rotting sickness erodes one's memory. I doubt that she remembers the first thing about me. Oh, I must be getting old. I didn't always worry so much. <laughs> now, all you need to do is deliver the needle to Millicent. She's convalescing in the church atop the cliff just beyond Celia. Do so, and you sh Now, she's con- Do so. I have a really hard time reading Gowry, do you? Because the laugh, it's the laugh. It's a little bit the tone, but a lot of it is just the laugh at the end. The laugh in the track record of people who laugh like that in these games. <laughs> no, never good, but maybe. I really don't know how to read Gowry at this point. Uh, I do know how to dodge these uh, ethereal wizards who just want to ruin my day. Uh, there's another seal over there. We're going to be working our way towards, I think, this staircase. They'll bring us up to another seed. Uh, and more importantly, we can get up on the rooftops from here and... My nickname for this place is Celia Town of Platforming. 
because we will be doing a lot of it to light all those fires. So we mentioned Millicent being his, he thinks of her as his adopted daughter. Uh, which, that gives a little more context to Pollyanna, who helped us against O'Neill. Pollyanna adopted daughter. He has, he said four. Staff missing its glintstone, wielded by, uh, I don't think I'm getting hit. Sorcerers who believe that discovery comes through acts of asceticism. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. Perfect positioning. <laughs> That's the scarab I heard, so we're going to snipe that from long range. This should be just in reach. Get a double slash out of that. Great. More importantly, we can continue to progress up the tree roots and rooftops. Which is going to prove a little, 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 little bit tricky. I particularly really hate the tree roots. I hate them so much. They're uneven surfaces. They suck. Why would... Mm. Why? Why are there so many of them, too? There's so many of these throughout the game. Ah! You just like, you slip and slide a little bit on them and then it makes you panic and you overcorrect. Or sometimes you just sl- Okay. You just slide off. Enemies don't use their wings. Ever. It's dismaying. All right, up we go. And a lot of these are not that scary, but some of them are nerve wracking. In fact, quite a few. And here's our first blue flame. Whoop. All right, next. Oh, come on, Torrent. There you are. He struggles being summoned on, like, the lip of things. Okay. And then over here. We can drop off there and up. So even if you don't get the note from Gowry, you see it's pretty intuitive. Like, you just look around a little bit and you notice these three large steeples standing out and all the sealed gates and all the tree roots leading to the steeples. Wait, steeple is not the word I'm looking for, is it? Hmm. Either way, I'm not going to worry about that right now because I will get you distracted. And I need to just finish off this last little bit of platforming and I'll be happy. Um, but yeah, it's they're very conspicuous. And you just have to light one to figure out, oh, that's what's going on here. You just have to investigate a little bit. And then resummon torrent. It's much easier to do it this way. It really helps if you're not just purely platforming on foot or purely trying to do things on torrent. You have to know what the right tool for the job is, and you have a you have a surprising amount of them. For this being largely a combat focused game. You need to oh shit. Might need to go back uh, this way. There we go. There's another painting in here. Uh, and that one will also require a really scary uh, bit of platforming to get to. But I will remember that one. 
Uh, we haven't done any of the paintings so far, so... We'll definitely remember to do the scary platforming uh, at the earliest available off. Oh, 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 oh no. Okay. Oh, I just got stun locked for a second and. Whoa, it spooked me. We're good. Uh, most importantly, all the seals are gone. Uh, we're not going to clean up all of this just yet. However, there's one in particular. There are a few in particular that I want to get to. This being one of them. Uh, but not just yet. We'll go back for that in a moment. First, we want to climb the big staircase again. Uh, and then this is the main route forward. And there's a Sight of Grace up here. I wanted to hit that up before we went through the boss fog gate. I'm not sure if the one of the higher denomination will be enough. But that'll definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. Make our daggers one point beefier. Now we can head through this. And it's another pair of bosses, but this time... It's a swordstress and a monk. And we don't recognize anything about them. They are Nox. And they have really cool weapons! like the swordstress is gonna hang back hang back a little bit too much what is she doing oh hell yeah <laughs> I want them to separate a little bit more because you can see even with them spaced a little bit apart they both have range Nice little flip onto both. If you're not gonna close the gap, I will st oh no. Okay, that's too much damage. Gotta have a little fun. But I will if they aren't gonna aggress upon me. Oh hell yeah. There we go, we just needed to encourage them a little bit to start doing cool stuff. Ow! Oh my god. I can't believe that actually reached. Oh no! Not too big of a risk, though. Now he's just hugging her. Playing a little game of cat and mouse trying to separate them. So we can turn this into a proper one-on-one. -on -one. How do you like it? Oh, wow, you hate that! Why does it feel like... Gowry was overtuned for me, but this boss, who's clearly meant to be fought after... Or not Gowry, uh, O'Neill. Meant to be fought after O'Neill feels, like, very, very weak. It could just be a matter of, like, damage types, but... Strange, right? Oh my god. Oh hell yeah, we get the Nox Flowing Sword. And possibly something else. Just saw the ghost of someone with a jellyfish shield? Hell yeah! Lusat's Glintstone Staff. What is this? 
a grim weapon wielded by swordsmen of the Eternal City, this shodol has a blade as fine as a needle, forged from the liquid metal of a silver tear. It's thoroughly tempered until hardened. That's why it can change forms and flow like that. It's made of the same stuff as Mimics and the Albanorix. Safe of the a staff of the primeval glintstone sorcerer Lusat. Only those who have glimpsed what lies beyond the wisdom of stone may wield it. Enhances the power, uh, power of all sorceries, but they consume additional mana. So this isn't the main thing that we open up uh, by going through the town of Celia and doing all the puzzles. Oh, hell yeah. And is there anything behind? But it is something very interesting. Uh, but now let's get back to that hill. Uh, because it's going to take us towards Millicent and the church that she is uh, convalescing in. Gowry also mentioned that she's being worshipped by the pests. So we're going to have an encounter with them and that's sure to be unpleasant. They always suck. giant skulls. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, they're rising out of the graves. Yay, we got a red sky back. Good. Oh, and more of those guardians. Those guardian statues. Hello? And you'll notice there's, uh, there's, there's a little English on those. <laughs> they will curve towards you. They don't follow a straight path. A bastard tree. <laughs> no breaks in Caled. Looting from the pests waiting out front. And I think the mate. Yeah. Just gonna do a little wanted curving their bullets around the corner. But this is fine. Oh, that might be too... Uh, that's not terrible. The flame's still reached, at least. Oh, yeah. Not safe, right? I really just want to not... have to worry about getting shot by one of them while I kill the other. Now we're fine. And this will hit. And do full damage. Very nice. Okay, so there's not more pests than those two. Not bad. Oh no, there are a couple back here. I mean, as far as ones we're going to encounter in or around the church. No problem. And we want to make sure everything is clear. Because if Millicent is inside, we really do not want her being attacked and dragged into our fight. And Gowry was right. Who's there? Well, it matters not. If you are wise, you will leave immediately. My flesh writhes with scarlet rot. It is a curse. Not to be meddled with by man. You ask that I stab myself with the needle to quell the scarlet rot. But how? <laughs> Never mind. I've decided I would rather trust you than simply continue to spoil from within. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment?
Well, that was easier than expected. But, but why do I feel so... Is she okay? She doesn't seem okay. And this is where ice ran through my veins. Along with, like, the suspicious vibe Gowrie was giving off, but it's fine. I hoped to see you again. My apologies for when last we met. I fainted before I could even thank you. Everything is as you said. Since inserting the needle, the scarlet rot has ceased to writhe. Even the nightmares have abated. And now, though I can scarcely believe it myself, I can move as I please. Not that I could ever truly repay you, but I would like you to have this. By way of thanks. A token though it is. I'm considering leaving. On a journey, with the needle buried in my flesh, I've started to recall, but dimly, my destiny. It's all thanks to you. My name is Millicent. I pray fate permits us meet again. I'm considering leaving with the needle my destiny. Got the prosthesis wearer's heirloom which raises dexterity. Though born into the accursed rot, when the young girl encountered her mentor and his flowing blade, she gained wings of unparalleled strength. I don't take that last part literally, though I think that might be hinting at something literal connected to it, but you know what does have literal wings? The clean rot knights that we've encountered a few times in the swamp, and also uh, the one who was a boss in Stillwater Cave back in Liernia. So remember they have the red bit of cloth on their backs, and then white strips emerging from their waists behind the cloth? I always thought those were those white bits were just also different bits of cloth, like a waistband kind of thing, or a waist cloth. Oh, and there's another Rosa statue, looking out over this vast desert. Uh, but... Yeah, I thought they were like torn, ragged bits of cloth, but... Thanks once more to Zully the Witch, we can take a closer look at them with the red cloth, the outer layer of that stripped away. And... Get nice and close and take a leisurely gaze without them trying to kill you. The wings are insect-like, and they appear to be growing out of the nights along with bits of twigs and branches. The branches are like poking out from within their armor, from the creases. They also have a mesh covering them. Uh, called cordyceps. Which is very telling. Got a smithing stone seven, another seven, an eight, and a stone sword key. That's a really good indicator of what we're going to be dealing with in this part of Kaelid. Uh, this part towards the northeast is known as Dragon Barrow. And everything here is much, much more dangerous than uh, the rest of Kaelid. This is tuned to be for a much higher level character. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, specifically it's called Grails. Dragon Barrow. That's Grail. And now 
all the other ones are mad. However, that doesn't mean very much. They can't reach me here. And Grail herself does not fight back. So we're going to have the true Elden Ring experience of stabbing this dragon for approximately 5 to 10 minutes on procking bleed on it until it dies. It's getting close, so I'm going to grab myself a couple of extra runes by popping a foul foot. And what do we get for that? For slaying... The Trueborn Heir? A new Draconic Power being available at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, along with five Dragon Hearts, and a boatload of runes, which again tells you the level of intensity that we're going to be getting around here. Uh, and I believe this is Fort Faroth. We will be coming back here shortly. Uh, but we just wanted to grab this for now. Spend some of those runes. Several levels up worth. Uh, so pretty much everybody does that on their first playthrough. Everybody who knows about it. It's a great way to just give yourself a little jump start. Uh, and you can come do that pretty much at any point in the game. As long as you have something that procs the bleed, you can kill it in a fairly timely fashion. Uh, it's It takes less time than shooting dragons to death with a bow and arrow in uh, Demon Souls. <laughs> so there's that. Five dragon hearts! I need those. Before we end the episode, we're going to come back to the shack one more time because Gowrie is gone, but Millicent has showed up. Oh, hello again. Something about this place felt familiar to me, so I decided to pay a visit, hoping to find someone here, but I've only found emptiness. Perhaps before my departure, I needed someone to say farewell to. Well, never mind that. I must focus on my journey. For which I have you to thank. I must stay strong. Well, never mind that. I must focus. I must stay. Right, and we'll go ahead and reload that one more time. Careful not to aggro his dog this time. And Gary is back. Thank you kindly for giving the needle to Millicent. Now she too can begin her journey and stare her fate straight in the eye. You've been a saint through and through. As thanks, I vow to impart to you my knowledge of the lost sorceries of the Selians, descendants of the Eternal. Oh, you noticed, did you? Indeed, Millicent did visit this hall of a home. It seems the memories eaten away by the rotting sickness yet remain, but faintly. However, she has no need of me anymore. No, she must embark on her journey and stare her fate in the eye. I mustn't impede. As I've aged, I've found the best way to aid the young is to be forgotten. And at this point, Gowrie becomes a merchant or a teacher for us, an instructor with some unique sorceries like Night Maiden's Mist. Releases a life-sapping silver mist before the caster dealing damage to all caught within, including the caster. Below Celia, the eternal city of Nakron sleeps. Uh, the Selian sorcerers were assassins, and it's said that they often hunted their fellows. So something unique about night sorceries is that enemies uh, are programmed to be unable to detect them, and therefore unable to dodge them. 
Uh, he's also got the Glintstone Stars spell, which is also from Celia. All right, so I think that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you all for watching. We'll pick up with Kaled next time. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.